Welcome back to Crystal Clear! I'm Ostrich Vox, and Rosebuds is finally the point where Steve Universe Future begins to rip out our hearts. With a humorous episode that also manages to be very awkward and very intense. But all for the right reasons that still make an enjoyable experience. So of course, we're going to break it down. Of course, spoiler warning, if you haven't seen these episodes, go check them out, then come back. With all that said, let's dive in. Storyboarded by Lamar Abrams and Adam Mudo, this is the second episode Adam Mudo has storyboarded for the series. The first being escapism. I imagine Mudo will not be a consistent boarder as he has Adventure Time Distant Lands to work on, but it was nice to have him back so soon. Now the title of this episode is an obvious play on actual Rosebuds and the term bud as in friend. Vintage Steven Universe. This episode addresses something that was probably on everyone's mind since the offense of a single pale rose. Why do they still have the frame painting of rose quartz? I viewed it in the movie as a sign of embrace and forgiveness, but Steven's words show that clearly isn't the case. Steven's mommy issues temporarily get put on hold before being amplified by the arrival of Pink Diamond Zoo, which is not only apparently portable this entire time, which yeah, makes sense, should have figured that one out, but is now in control by the Zoomins, no longer sporting their earrings as a result. Although a lot has changed for the Zoomins in the two years since we've seen them, both in universe and in real time, one thing they haven't relinquished is their grudge against Greg for breaking their hearts at the choosing, mocking Greg's music and van, asking if he has some soundness to listen to in his will of convenience. We also have a minor theory confirmed. As we suggested a few times since the release of Change Your Mind, the human zoo is now a paradise for zoomins, as they're pampered by the court soldiers who are also taking the time to relax and enjoy themselves. But not everyone is loving this new arrangement, however, as Holly Blue Agate introduced with a few notes from her theme, is still trying to boss around the amethyst. This one's not even wearing any boots! Disgusting! Actually, that probably pleased someone's fetish out there. Holly Blue's being driven mad by the lack of order, irritated that the diamonds can't shut up about Steven. And notice how the ominous diamond chord plays when she longs for an order from them. I'd give anything for an order from the diamonds, but all they talk about is Steven, Steven, Steven. This sinister variation of the theme hasn't played since confronting White Diamond and Change Your Mind, which may not sound like that long until you consider that the diamonds themselves even have that chord play in their appearances throughout the movie. The closest being the more chilled out variation when they come to move in with Steven and leave with Spinel, a variation that first played in the episode Legs from the Homeworld. This seems more than just shedding light on how our character is doing. With the knowledge that something bad may happen to White Diamond later in the season, this could be a look at things to come. Y6 brings Steven to the unbubbled Rose Quartzes, which clearly throws Steven for a loop. Despite the abundance of them, we're only given three to mingle and interact with throughout the episode. Shy Rose Quartz, Superfan Rose Quartz, and Hippie Rose Quartz, which I believe were done for a reason. Each of these Rose Quartz gems embody a strong quality in relation to Steven's mother. Shy Rose Quartz obviously looks nearly identical, complete with the gem placement, but as we see by the episode's end, she's also observant, able to read the room. Superfan Rose Quartz channels the energy and childlike wonder of Pink Diamond, which was definitely a visible trait in flashbacks. And Hippie Rose Quartz is a lot more straightforward. Hippies are often associated with the moral compass of saving the Earth. Peace and love, man. An agenda that Rose Quartz and the Crystal Gems prided themselves on. Not to mention Uncle Andy mistook Paradigm and Lapis for Hippies in Gem Harvest. The Rose Quartz Gems also confirmed that they were indeed on Earth when they emerged, adding to the credibility of Pink Diamond's facade, despite never seeing any other Rose Quartz Gems in flashbacks. This episode's atmosphere absolutely nails awkward tension. Superfan and Hippie Rose Quartz trying way too hard to get on Steven's good side, and help him feel comfortable with the gems, whose image was ruined by the diamond who stole the gem's identity. The deliberate use of dialogue suggests Hippie saying she would have wanted a pearl just like ours, sliding her butter to eat when Pink Diamond is the reason Pearl doesn't enjoy eating in the first first place, due to Pink Diamond swallowing fake gem shards right in front of her. The lack of music, only being used sparingly? It's all great stuff that makes you feel as if you're in the room right with the gems. Pearl cowering in the bathroom with Garnet gives us confirmation of previously suspected world building. Gems take traits after their diamond and behave a certain way. Because the Rose Quartz gems were made by Pink Diamond, they share hints of her personality. Once again, expressing from a narrative standpoint why these particular Rose Quartzes are needed for Steven to face underlying issues. On that note, all the Rose Quartz have defining differences from one another in appearance, more so than any other same type gem group we've met throughout the series, showing how much Pink Diamond 
value nonconformity and expression. Also, I'm dead. Rose Quartz is a perfect joke, even if it won't age well with slaying in a hundred years. Sue me. But don't actually sue me. I don't have that much money. Superfan Rose Quartz briefly changes the tape to Rose's message for Steven. Something that clearly makes everyone uncomfortable. Again, this episode just nails awkward tension. Just because awkward things happen doesn't mean those awkward things will be acknowledged right away. Once the Rose Quartz gems pick up on what's going on and jet out of the room, Rose Quartz's theme jingles for a brief moment before being abruptly cut off. Uh, wait! The Rose Quartz theme briefly pops up across the episode, but I feel this was the most notable and impactful moment. After talking things out, Steven comes to an understanding with the Rose Quartz gems, realizing they should be viewed more as siblings than those who are carbon copies of his mother. And this episode ends on a somber note that can be perceived as bittersweet, Steven placing the painting in Lion's Mane. Whereas before Pink Diamond used this place to store her own past, leaving things behind for Steven to stumble upon, Steven is now utilizing it to put his own past behind him, putting the false identity of Rose Quartz behind him. That being said, the final few notes of the score in this episode bring it full circle, as there's a slower, more realized rendition of the notes in the episode's opening moments. All right, Mom. Where should you go? And it makes me oddly sentimental. But let's move on to volleyball. Steven has adopted a persona on the side to aid all the gems living on Earth and working in Beach City. Nurse Steven. Probably no certified PhD. Steven heals up Nanophile's rubies, asking how their gems frequently get cracked only to be told it's classified information. But let's be real, her former guards are likely out for revenge by any means necessary. A slew of corpses have also been injured in an intense game of volleyball, likely due to, well, as Jasper put it so eloquently all the way back in Crack the Whip, fighting is what quartz gems were made for. So it's only natural for things to get a little heated in sports to the point where Steven has to be medic on deck. After all, he remarks, volleyball isn't a contact sport. So yeah, a little heated. This episode begins to peel back the true family relationship between the diamonds. Steven, and shortly after Pearl, initially assumes that Pink Pearl's cracked eye was due to the abuse of White Diamond, something that's reasonable for all of us to assume. But as Pink Pearl quickly and happily explains, it was all Pink Diamond. While a missing eye is one sole situation as it is, it begs the question of how much the White Diamond actually do, and how much of our perception is built on false notions. When Pearl first sees Pink Pearl, she asks if she's come to compete, needing to specify the volleyball tournament. A dose of the tension to come later on in this episode. These two pros competing for who was the closest to Pink Diamond. Which one knew her best? As Pink Pearl reminiscence about her late Diamond, Pink Silhouette is presented in the style of your mother and mine's flashbacks. A flashback we know was built on lies and muddy details, establishing that Pink Pearl has a false view of Pink Diamond, unable to get the bigger picture, much like our Pearl, until the episode's resolution. On that note, Pink Pearl's love for Pink's nicknames calls back to Familiar, where Blue Diamond revealed and adored the same thing. Remember when I let you name that batch of pyrite? Fool's gold. <laughs> <laughs> the two pearls are very sly with their need to compete with each other, Pearl remarking, I was her pearl. Despite this just being established, Volleyball inserting that they were very close, Pearl slightly demeaning Volleyball by stating she reminds Pearl of when she was younger, and thus more naive to the true nature of Pink Diamond, only for Volleyball to top it off with, I'm older than you. These things are never addressed straightforward, but it shows they're both still protective of their perceptions of Pink Diamond and their relationships with Pink. Revisiting a taste of the movie's warping sequence and music takes Steven and the Pearls to the reef, where all Pearls are created. World building! And sheesh, the shell imagery is rampant, and I thought the movie was a bit on the nose. But you know what? It's still neat. The Reef gives us a proper look at the process behind pearls and their customization. Holograms that illustrate how a pearl could look. Appearance modifiers, aka clothes, first mentioned by Paradise in the episode Log Date 7152, and various accessories. Also, I know Log Date is 7152, but you know what? I like saying 15 better. Pearl scoffing at the ribbon wands and even dismissing Pink Pearl's fondness of her own gifted by Pink Diamond adds fuel to the fire of these pearls only understanding individual sides of Pink Diamond. What was objectification and meaningless toys to Pearl was a token of love and appreciation of volleyball. This moment gives payoff to their fusion utilizing the ribbon wand in the climax. As volleyball begins to shed light on what really happened to her eye, Pearl tenses up, 
her body language emulating her behavior in Rose's Scabbard. Another instance of Pearl being forced to face the reality that Pink Diamond held more secrets than even Pearl was aware of. In this case, Pearl learns of a dangerous side to Pink Diamond, her destructive power. Even more telling, Pearl didn't believe Pink Diamond through tantrums, whereas that was the first defining trait we learned about Pink Diamond all the way back in Jungle Moon, her appearance contoured by rage. In fact, Volleyball Scar is a result of Pink Diamond using that same destructive will Pink Steven unleashed against White Diamond and Change Your Mind, an ability White Diamond wasn't all too phased by. Hmm, makes you think. Said ability finds its way in this episode. Steven angered by his mother's actions and refusing to hear another horrible act she committed, unleashing a smaller yet just as startling whale in a fit of rage. The system even recognizes Steven as Pink Diamond through a tantrum, being programmed to rejuvenate the pearls. As the two pearls realize they're still making excuses for Pink Diamond, for the two different sides they knew, they come to a very special understanding, fusing into Mega Pearl. As always, we'll break down this fusion more in our own dedicated video, but wow, she has style, she has grace, the Utana vibes are in your face. Also, how they fuse is totally a callback to friendship with Sardonyx. Who am I kidding? This fusion as a whole feels like it at some points. They even used a ribbon wand as a drill! Also, can we just give a kudos to the animation and storyboarding during this sequence? Steven maneuvering and then sliding on a shield? This is what we like to see! After their wild experience, Mega Pearl unfuses. The two closer than ever in realizing they have each other to better understand Pink Diamond and to help their pain ease even if it's ever so slightly. It appears Volleyball Scar has been reduced, no longer extending to her hair. Yet, we intentionally don't see that side of her face just yet. Because at this point, the scar no longer matters. What matters is healing, and now Volleyball can see the bigger picture as clear as day without letting go or trying to cover up her scars because those scars help make her who she is today. Now jumping to the credits, we finally have lyrics added to being human. I say finally when it was introduced in the same night. And although we only have a few, they read, just a little time, just a little something else instead. Just a little time. I'm assuming this song will really compliment Little Homeworld, and just the new live stems are going to take an era three, so I'm excited to see how it develops. But already, just a little time reminds me of everything of the original series, how much time it took for the gems to get where they are now. But eh, I've yapped enough. As always, I want to know what you guys think. Which of these two were your favorite episodes? Which were your favorite of all four? Any moments that stick out in particular? Do you want to see the Mega Profusion again? I sure do. Let us know your thoughts in the comments below or tweet your thoughts at RoundtableVids. And for more of my own thoughts, you can find me at AshikVox. We're also on Instagram. Help Roundtable grow by either becoming a member of this channel or supporting us over at Patreon. Link in the description. If you enjoyed this video, please drop a like and subscribe to the Roundtable for more great cartoon content. Thank you for watching and I hope you have an awesome day. Austric Vots, signing out.